my name is Bill Swearingen. I'm going to be talking about landing your dream job in information security. Um, a little bit about me, I'm right from the bat. I'm the manager of the, uh, of the computer incident response team, the vulnerability assessment, the penetration testing, and corporate for forensics for a, one of the major telcos. Um, my team's job um, it is, uh, and actually a lot of my team has been speaking here today, so I hope you guys have enjoyed you know, a lot of the talks good, going on. But, so my team's job is to discover and understand the latest threats um, in order to prevent others from leveraging those against us, right? So, so we do a lot, we do, yeah, gosh, I'm probably going to have to put this thing on. Can you guys? No, there it is. All right, sorry about that. So, um, additionally, I'm uh, the co-founder of the Kansas City Hackerspace, as well as a co-founder of SetKC, which is Kansas City's, um, you know, information security meetup. It's real similar to, you know, putting on events like this. Um, I freaking love Python, um, so if I happen to just go into like a Python rant while we're doing that, I, I do apologize. Um, and, and really, I really enjoy teaching people about hacking, right? So I really like talking about breaking into the systems. I really like talk. I like talking about um, the protection mechanisms that we use, how to defeat those. Um, and really, what it is is making sure that you know my team always has a job, you know, in the future. So training those hackers how to hack is like the circle of life. Right? <laughs> so I do want to kind of start with my assumptions of you and, and everyone in this audience. Right, so when I'm talking about landing your dream job in information security, I just kind of want to set the base on where I, where, I, uh, where this presentation is coming from. And really, um, you know, after talking with Jason Street and, and, and the others at this conference, uh, I'm really targeting the individuals that are in IT, right? Um, maybe in college, um, you know, or really wanting to make that first step, right, into infosec, corporate security, um, whatever, and really kind of looking for some advice like, on how do I. How do I make that jump? How do I move from IT? How do I make that jump? How do I get my foot in that door so I can carry on, uh, you know, and moving forward within corporate security? So that's my assumptions on, on, on who my audience is. Um, if, if you, um, you know, after this talk, if you fit outside of that and have some questions, um, you know, interested in some other ideas, I'd be really willing to, to chat with you. Um, so, first of all, I do want to talk about exactly what is information security. Uh, and I think this is a really important topic, especially for, for users who are not, you know, it's not our day-to-day -day job, right? Ex understanding exactly what is, in, what is InfoSec, what does a Fortune 500 consider information security? So, we kind of broke it down to these, these, these five uh, areas. Uh, system security, systems Engineer, admin and engineering, okay, so I, I, I didn't get that one uh, word for it there. But really what this is, is this is making sure that those systems that we have uh, are, are up and running, right? Uh, they're, they're fed, they're taken care of, they're happy, uh, and, and um, you know, and they're, they're performing the tasks uh, that we're expecting them to, to do. If you were in uh, Dave Kennedy's talk this morning, he, he, he mentioned that's a big problem for companies, right? So, so we get caught in buying the latest blinky lights and we... Uh, forget about what we had in the past. So, uh, you know, definitely a part of information security is, is making sure that we're keeping those systems up to date. Um, security governance, this is probably one of the sexiest parts of corporate security or information security, but, you know, this is setting our security policy and our standards, right? Um, making sure that, uh, uh, that we are part of the governance section of, of security risk, right? So that we, we are setting what the, uh, the appropriate risk uh, appetite our, our company is is willing to take right and then and de designing our standards and our policies around that on um, risk mitigation and compliance um, sorry there's there's so many words you know some so many listed here but this is a this is definitely a, a strong um, influencer of infosec it's a uh, basically we have security risk assessment where we where we can uh, ass, you know kind of evaluate what is this you know with a, the risk of this application as it pertains to you know our business, as well as you know all of the, like the penetration testing, right? Um, you know, and the vulnerability management. You know, like how do I once I know about vulnerabilities in my environment, how do I manage manage that? As well as being compliant with a lot of the regulatory um, you know uh, requirements that we have out there. So. Um, threat and exploit management. So this is kind of when we talk about. Uh, this is probably what you, actually what we just saw right in front of this talk, was exploit development, understanding how 
um, you know, researching different uh, new techniques um, and being able to detect um, and, and notify on, on different um, on new exploits. And IR, I mean, IR is definitely a huge side of, of uh, information security. Um, and this is where my team sits, right? So, so earlier when we were kind of talking about, uh, this is where my team sits is for my company as we make sure that we're doing incident readiness, incident response, containment, um, also malware analysis, uh, computer forensics, and such. Um, you know, I, I took a, this was a, a, you know, I kind of flew through a lot of that. I am gonna post the slides if you guys are interested. Uh, but really, I think it's really important before you even get started in, in making your career into information security is, is deciding what what exactly am I wanting to do, right? So I know I know it kind of flew around that real quickly, but once you start to once you identify exactly, you know, I'm really interested, and I think I think my talents really fit into this, you know, into the big circle, and then you come and take a look at the subtasks underneath. You can really start to hone in exactly where your where your career path needs to go. Okay, that's kind of what we're going to talk about. So so once we identify exactly what we want to do, right? So how do we even begin to start going that, down that path. And remember, you know, my, my target audience here is, is those users that uh, are really looking to get into uh, InfoSec. So I, I kind of want to just open it up with this is a real quick story. Um, you know, it has really nothing to do with the rest of the talk, but I want to talk about like maybe what, what if we, there was a person and their, and their ultimate goal was to be a translator, right? They want to travel the world, um, and, and, and translate for you know for businesses or, or whatever, um, you know what what would they want to do? Well, I think this is kind of a really good example of uh, it, it, it's easy to understand. Well, first, they probably need to know the languages that they're going to be translating, right? It, what we what we can't expect is you know what I'm just going to get the job as a translator, and on the job I'm going to learn you know I, I'm going to learn you know app, you know like Russian. Right? That's not gonna. That's not gonna happen, right? So there's gonna need to be a lot of preparedness, right? They need to understand exactly where am I gonna go in this world, right? What are the languages that I'm gonna need to know? Um, you know, what what are the types of terminology? What kind of you know, what what exactly am I gonna be translating? Practice those those tasks, gain those skills, and then apply to be a translator, right? And, I, and I'm really I'm really afraid that a lot of times, uh, especially you know with with Kids and you know, or I'm sorry, people coming out of college uh, and, and people that have been working in IT. A lot of times they, they assume, well, I'm going to get my foot in the door in infosec, and then I'm going to learn the skills that I need to do infosec, right? And I really hope, I really just hope the translator example kind of sticks with you, because really I think in your path to go down, getting your you know your dream job, really first what you need to do is you need to identify the skills required to be considered an expert in that field, okay? So literally just sit down and brainstorm and be thinking about what would be those skills, okay, so we, we've identified the first bubble. I want to be, you know, this is where I want my career to go. Then we take a look at the subtasks. I'm really interested in one of these subtasks. Now, you know, we're starting to narrow down our path. Then we start to understand what exactly do we want those skills to be to be considered an expert in that field. Right? So I just kind of take an example here. Um, you know, let, let's just say uh, you kind of want to be go down the IR side, right? Um, and you take a look at that, and you know, like, you know, I see, you know, in eighty up here uh, showing off malware. I want to be able to 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 analyze that malware. I want to be able to determine is this code malicious or is it not? Well, I just kind of brainstorm some of the things that that someone who would be considered an expert in that field might need to do. Um, for example, they, they probably need to be able to design and implement a, a safe system, right? So we talked about earlier, he was talking about moving to a clean system, you know. So making, making an environment that's conducive to analyzing code that, that may be malicious, right? Um, you're going to need a source, a reliable source for malware. If you're going to be a malware analyst, you've got to get it from somewhere. I, I, you know, like, okay, where do we start, right? Um, you need to be able to identify reliably, right? System changes, network calls, file downloads, you know, memory analysis, you know, what we saw, saw earlier. You need to be able to do that, and you need to be able to do it well. Because if you're gonna, if you are, if you're being held to the fire, is this piece of code malicious or is it not? 
you need to be able to you know make an informed decision there, right? Um, you know, automated, purposeful, reliable output, um, and, and really, you're probably going to, if you're going to be a malware analyst, you're probably going to need some some debugging or disassembly skills, right? Okay, so so first, the our our first task was to identify the skills that we would need to be considered an expert, right? Um, well, second, you know, it's going to be prioritized and obtain those skills, and I and, and I know I I know that that's kind of a daunting. Uh, slide right okay like okay go I need to learn this so I guess I'll go learn that right well it actually turns out it only takes about 20 hours to fully learn a new skill okay and I really want you to kind of let that sink in right it only takes 20 hours a dedicated 20 hours to learn a new skill right so if you take a look in one month right in one month if you were to spend one hour a day dedicated to any one of those subtasks that we talked about there, you, you would have learned that skill. It, may, it, may, it would almost take less than one month. I kind of want to break that down a little bit, right? So, so this is coming from, um, well, I guess we'll, we'll get there. Um, so it, what this is, is this is the learning curve, right? And what, if you take a look at, uh, traditionally what's been said is it takes, it takes about 10,000 hours to be an expert in, in a field, right? And so this is that learning curve of 10,000 well, if you take a look, you know, the, the learning curve really happens in the front, right? So if you were to spend 20 hours focusing in on that, you know, hyper-focused on that subtask, you know, over time, the rest of your life, you have time to take on those diminishing returns and become a real expert, right? And that's where you're going to grow your career. But in order to be able to say, I know this, look, it doesn't take much. Um, the way that we do that, and this came from the first 24 hours, it was uh, a, a gentleman presented at TED, his name was Josh Kaufman, who, who designed this. Um, and so, but basically, in order to learn any new task, what you need to do is deconstruct the skill. Uh, and what, basically, what that means is continue to narrow it down. Right? So we talked earlier about the, the first bubble of information security. Right? Then we talked about the sub-skills underneath that. Well, we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to break down those skills um, and, and um, you know, and basically deconstruct those. So, for example, the first task was designing a safe system, right? So the, the very first example of a malware analysis uh, analyst was you got to be able to work in a safe environment. Okay, well, let's, let's deconstruct that, right? What does that look like, right? Uh, is it a, a physical box that's in, in your home lab? Right? Is it a VM that you can you can save state, right? That you can compare against others, right? You know, you just need to kind of break that down. Then second, start doing it, right? Build it, and then make sure that you're self-correcting along the way. Reach out to others in, in our community. Uh, there, there's going to be several guides out there on on how you can get you know how you build a, a malware analysis system, uh, and then make sure you correct your make, you correct your your deployment, right? Um, and then third, make sure you're removing barriers for learning. This is really the, uh, I think, out of everything, probably one of the most important uh, pieces on this slide. I and mean, basically what this means is turn off the TV, right? So if, if you've got, you know, if, if we're going to have 20 hours dedicated to learning a new skill, dedicate those 20 hours, right? So, so earlier I said, you know, you could probably learn this skill in a month. And you know, it, it, maybe it goes a month, maybe it goes two months, maybe it goes six months, whatever. But if you're actually going to dedicate an hour to that, turn off all the distractions. Turn off Twitter, turn off Facebook, you know, like turn off all, you know, and, and dedicate your time um, to get your practice in 20 hours. Okay, so, so now we, we're starting to understand, okay, you know, basically, wow, we, you know, basically what we've tried to do is we're trying to focus down Exactly the skills that we're after in order to get our you know to get our foot in the door. Well, once we start learning learning things and once we start doing things, I think it's really important. I mean, I really think it's very important. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past, right? It matters what you're doing right now. That's all that matters. It matters what you're doing right now, and it matters that you tell people what you're doing. Okay. So I think it's uh, I think it's really interesting, and, and every time I, I get in front of uh, technical audiences like this, and like at SecKC and, uh, and and like Route 66, 
and I get talking to people, I'm like, hey, what are you doing? What are you working on? And people will, you know, they'll tell me, hey, you know, I've just kind of been kicking this thing around. I'm like, why are you talking about it? And, and, and people get really hyper caught up with that, well, it's hard to get in front of, get up in front of other technical people because technical people already know everything that I'm working on, right? I'm not doing any, you know, I'm not writing DLL injectors that are overriding memory analysis, so nobody wants to hear what I'm talking about. Well, that's not true, right? So pe you know, technical people get real worked up that, you know, because I'm not doing groundbreaking stuff, it's not worth talking about. And that's, com that's a complete false uh, assumption, and it's a problem of our industry, right? You need to talk about what you're doing, because if I stood up here and said, hey, I, uh, I just, did, did you guys know about a, a, a tool called Cuckoo Sandbox? Um, I just installed it, it's freeware, and it automates the analysis of malware. Have you guys ever heard about it? You want me to install it and show you how it works? Right? I didn't write that code. Um, I, you know, like, installing a program and configuring a program to run is not really that interesting. But, you know, um, uh, we did, uh, another one of my coworkers presented that at another conference and had a packed room, right? So just make sure along the way you're telling others what you're doing. And, and when, you're, when you're telling others what you're doing, make sure you work the social game. Um, this is, I think this is really important, again, um, in our industry, is that when you are talking and when you are presenting in, in front of either, either talking to an audience or posting on um, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever, you really make sure that, you're, that your post or, or whatever, or you know, the, the information that you're relaying tries to fit in one of the one of the three E's, right? So make sure you're you're either trying to entertain, and that doesn't necessarily mean to be funny. I mean that that can be, you know, that could mean that you're trying to be funny, but or it, what that really means is people are just really out looking to hear something new, right? And so just to be entertaining could be, you know, hey, uh, you know. Check out, check out this, this new piece of software that I found. I'm using it to do this, right? Um, educate, right? So along the way, and we're building out this malware lab, and you figure out, my goodness, if I would have just known that this one little checkbox would have saved me uh, even just how to take a snapshot before you run a piece of malware, post that, right? Tell people about that. Educate somebody else. Uh, about that. And don't worry if they know about it already. Don't worry about them at all. Right? And engage. Uh, ask questions. Hey, what are you working on? Um, you know, and answer questions. Go, you know, if, if somebody asks a question on Twitter, um, in, you know, in a social gathering like this, ask and answer it and just really try to be, you know, be a part of the conversation. Basically, what, I, what I'm trying to say is, you know, so, um, you know, as far as the, the three E's, just get involved. Right. Um, you know, I, I know Oklahoma has, has a, a strong InfraGuard, a strong ISSA. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the groups like the Irregulars or DC-405. Um, you know, the, the people who are putting on Route 66 are in your community, right? Um, you need to, you, this community needs to engage with each other um, in order to continue to push this, push it forward. So, um, as, as you're working on your social game, right? So as, as you're working on, okay, building my, you know, your social network or whatever, be ready to answer the question, hey, hey, where do I know you from, right? I, I think if, 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 you're, if you try and you really set out to be able to answer that question in a, in a social gathering, right? That's going to push everything else that you need, you're gonna be doing everything else right, right? If, if I were to come up and say, hey, you know, where would I know you from? And you have an answer, like, oh, you, you may know me from you know, Twitter, I post a lot of them, right? Or, hey, you, we probably saw each other at Route 66, you know, I, 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 gave a, I gave a presentation there, whatever. Automatically answering that question has put you in that spot, right? So as you're going out on your social game, try and remember that question. Um, okay, so, so we've kind of talked about, you know, how we narrow down exactly what we're wanting to do, right? We've narrowed down, this is, this is the, 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 what I'm interested in, and this is the subtask, and, and I know how to go, out, go about and learn how to do this. Um, and then we start working on our social game, and we're building our social network. That's all fine, and that's all well and good, but how do I get the job, right? And, and so like, we put ourselves on track, how do I get my job? So, uh, yeah, how do I do it, right? Especially, I know this is a wall of text, and I apologize, especially this, 
Uh, last night I went out on monster.com and I searched for incident response and I got back, you know, posting after posting and they need seven years of experience, four years of de dedicated incident response, you need this and that, this and that, and everything. Um, I understand it's hard, right? And what you need to be able to do, just like hey, being able to understand uh, or able to, being able to respond, hey, where do I know you from? You need to be able to uh, have, a, have an answer for each one of these, right? And the way you do that is you start at home, okay? Like, as, as a hiring manager, and, and, and we've gone through, um, you know, for the last, I don't know how many years, three years, I'm, we're always looking to hire, right? Once again, I don't care what you've done. I care what you're doing, okay? If you were to come to me and you, and you were to hit every one of those bullet points with an answer that, that matters, here's what I'm doing at home. I build out, I built out a lab. I'm downloading malware. I'm analyzing malware. I'm contributing back to, you know, to, to this, that, or whatever. And you're able to hit bing, 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 but you don't hit four years of dedicated incident response, I don't care, right? I care about what you're doing, what you're working on, not this bullet point. So start at home. Then, when you're working at home and you're building those skills and you're building yourself, try to look how to improve your current job, right? It's really, it's really easy to get caught up and the grass is always greener in a, in a different spot. Well, you know, if uh, let's say you're becoming a, a you're learning program, right? Um, you're, you're you're learning Python, for example, right? So you've worked for two months and your and your Python skills are getting starting to write your writing code. You're starting to understand well. How do I start using those skills at my current job? Right? And, and and maybe your current job doesn't doesn't facilitate that. Maybe it does, right? So. I do want to put up a bit of warning. I probably should have stolen some, someone's FBI warning. Don't go to work and start analyzing malware at work, right? You know, <laughs> don't do that, because um, that will get my team involved and everybody's going to have a bad day. But, but, but think about, okay, well, if I've got malware skills, right, and if I'm at home and I'm seeing malware skills, how can I help out my current job with that? Well, you, maybe you can figure out, I see these you know, at home, I'm seeing malware with, that's coming in this way, right? Or, or it's calling home to these IP addresses, or whatever. You, how about taking that output of that information and taking that to work and sharing it there? Hey, firewall team, um, I've been analyzing malware at home. Uh, I found a piece of malware that's calling home to these IP addresses. You guys mind blocking that, right? Take it that way, right? Or, or you know, maybe if, if you're working on programming, Python, whatever, uh, automate some tasks, and, but just start to build that in and you'll start to get known as the security guy. Even if you're not a dedicated security guy, then you can continue building out your skills and maybe you'll be able to build your perfect job rather than go get your perfect job. So uh, basically that, that's really the talk. You know, after, you've, after you have the experience, right, you have the knowledge, uh, then, you, then you're going to be able to go out and, and get that job. Um, really, I, I really do believe that uh, it, it really comes down to focusing in on what you want to do and making sure that you're training yourself to do that. Picture yourself as the translator, right? You're going to have to go get those skills. You're not going to learn them on the job, right? So that's all I have. Um, I do have the slides up. I know that they're not groundbreaking slides. But I do think that maybe they would be um, important if you're trying to if you're trying to find out exactly where um, you fit into to information security in a, you know in a in a large corporation. I put them up on Bitly, uh, Heaven Sent Dash Route 66. If I do want to warn you, it does go to a PDF document, but I promise you um, that PDF document is is uh, is fine. Um, if you find anything else, you know there's my uh, there's my Twitter handle, and you can find me there. But. Anybody have any questions or anything? All right. Thanks, everybody. I did, I did, I did, oh, I did, I did. that one. Um, the, the slide that you had that had the, the five foot or the five specific areas in it. Yeah. Um, one of those on there was an application source audit. Now, is that 
about secure, uh, like, like secure software design? Right. Um, here it is. <coughs> yeah, so application source code auditing, right? right? So that would be um, inserting security into the software development lifecycle, right? So uh, imagine that you have, a, you have a development team, right? Which, you know, maybe you're on, okay? Um, and if you are a coder, you know, it's really easy to be like, um, well, you know, like, I think the best example is I have a, a coworker of mine who, who will write an assembly, right? And be like, hey, did you document that? And he's like, what are you talking about? It's self-documenting code. It's assembly. And you're like, no, you know, that, that's not how it works, right? So as a programmer, you're writing, you're writing your, your code out. Having somebody else take a look at that and say like, hey, did you know that I could, you know, inject this, or, you know, inject this here? Oh, you know, just that what that is, is you know, the security review. Well, I have a question. Um, what you were saying earlier, you know, a lot of it depends on what you're doing. When, when you say that, I, I, when I hear from a lot of people, and the way I try to look at it, a lot about it, a lot of it is in this industry, you kind of have passion yeah. for what you're doing, you know, to enjoy your job. But from a hiring perspective, what do you see, like, are there any specific certifications you would really look at and say, or is it just one of those, it's just a piece of paper and you really don't need it, I'd rather see what you've done, what you're doing. So that's a great question. The question was about certifications. Is there any specific certification that, that we look for um, with hiring? I'm going to tell you, and that is a, a very hot topic, okay, I, I just want to start with you there. Um, if, you were to, if you were to line up everyone that has spoken here today, it'll go yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Um, my personal opinion, okay, and let me just start there, that I would never hire or not hire someone based off of a certificate, okay? Um, but what I would uh, tell you what it will help is if I, have, if I have 50 resumes coming at me, right, and I have one person who has none and another person who has 10, Okay. I'm going to go interview the 10 guy, right? Um, but that being said, I get them in the interview, and it's a complete train wreck. You know, and I'm like, well, this person has their CISSP. They must be fine with moms. You know, it would, it would never happen like that. Um, CISSP is probably the hottest certificate as far as, like, controversy-wise, right? Um, I like it. Like, you know, and, and a, lot of my, a lot of my coworkers and peers will, you know, jump on me about it. Um, it's a very difficult test, right? Um, you really have to dedicate a lot of time to it, and you'll get you'll get an inch, not an inch worth of security knowledge, but you'll put, you know an in, you know a mile wide. And, and quite honestly, it comes down to especially with you know highly technical people like like you are. It's kind of nice when you know like when you walk into a a retail store and you see physical security controls that you would have otherwise never recognized. Had you hadn't gone through that, you're like, oh, now I understand why those things are placed there. You know, it's to keep a truck from driving in the front door. You know, you know so. I hope that answers the question. No, no, it, uh, it, it totally does. It's just, you know, I, I'm always just curious about other people's opinions because, I, it, like you said, it is a depending on who you ask, it seems to be always a different answer. But I have found that in some companies, it's not always you doing the hiring. You have to get past human resources even to get to the next. Absolutely. Person. So like um, the way that you can tell that, I mean, there, there's, there's a trick there. Um, in the job posting, and I, I don't know if any of these job postings have it. Um, if it, yeah, well, if it says required, it's required. If it says, you know, like, um, yeah, preferred, then, you know, like, so um, basically if it's in the required field, then what that is is that's a, a filter for HR, and, and they'll filter at that. Well, it, 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 I, I do, a lot of hiring. I also do a lot of interviewing for our recruiting side at the company that I work for. And one of my expectations is, is once you give me the thing, if this is one of those things in there, tell me if you've got somebody who is outside of the uh, outside of the requirements, so I can find out either are they on the process of doing that, or do they have a valid reason why they don't. This is James Costello, another speaker. Um, and the three of us are actually from Kansas City, so. I and and what, one of the big, and, and like you said, the, the, the certification oftentimes is being used as a bill. Is it's a it's a minimum point there. Um, you can choose to play the game or not play that game. Um, I I agree with Bill. The CISSP is, is a good example because if you get this broad thing. You you walk into Target, you go 
That's funny. Put those concrete yeah. things there. Look at that it's ball it's here. That's a ball. Yeah. Wow, that's and, and, you, and you see <laughs> two stores down, a big sheet of plywood on the front of the uh, the Best Buy because somebody drove a truck right through the front of the store. Actually, happened in Kansas City. Oh, wow. The only the only set of stores in in that thing without those was the Best Buy. Somebody drove a truck through, stole a bunch of stuff, took off. Yeah. And it, it, you, you see those kinds of things, and your brain gets that. And it also gives you a broader idea of, of that. And that's one of the reasons I like it for other people. Another thing that I kind of want to hit on is um, if, I, if I were to go up against a hiring manager that, we, that absolutely requires certification and I didn't have it, I might not get a job that I wanted anyway. I, 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 you know, as a hiring manager, I, I, I take real pride on making sure that I have a really strong team and, and really what I'm looking for is what are you doing right now? Like, tell, answer me the question, why are you the right, the right person for my team, right? What, what are you going to bring to, uh, you know, I've already got, I've already got amazing people, right? What are you going to bring in? That, you know, and being able to answer that question, I could really, I don't care what your certification is. Now, and one of the other things you can do along that process is if you don't meet the exact requirements for this, Take that you know who the company is, go to LinkedIn, find out who the people are. If you're connected to any of those, reach out to, say, I don't know Bill, but I know Trent. Hey, Trent, you know, we've been, we've been talking about this thing, and I see Bill for a, a job. Could you put my name into Bill so that we could, because uh, I know it won't get past HR, can you put my name in that, so at least he'll talk to me? I can see what I can do that, maybe get some feedback on what to work on. Yeah. And use, use HR isn't your only path in your job. I've got several jobs by knowing you. And that's when you when you actually get higher up, you stop going through the, these things. You start running into a job will come to you, or you'll just be talking to somebody and they'll be like, Yeah, I interviewed for this one place that wasn't quite right for me, but you know, I was thinking about you. You might you might apply there. And you get a job through somebody else. And it, yeah, I mean it just sounds like I, I, you know, I've learned a lot of this has to do with networking here and other people and just really not being scared to ask people, hey, what do you think about this? Well, I, mean, I, I got to tell you, it's about not being scared about talking about stuff too. Like uh, talking about what you're working on. And uh, first of all, I mean, like, first of all, start working on something, right? I mean, that's like, and then don't be afraid to talk about it. Like if, if somebody, if you're talking to me about something that, that I wrote the tool on, like so if I wrote the tool and you come up and talk to me and Telling me what awesome things are. I mean, like, well, I you know, that's fantastic. I, I love hearing that you're using the tool. Have you thought about doing this? You know, like, if you you know, imagine going and talking to HD Moore and telling HD Moore what an amazing thing you did with Metascore, right? Or I mean, I, he would he would be very receptive to something like that. Just don't be afraid to talk. Um, I'm running out of time. Is there any other questions? Yeah. 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 Would you guys choose work while studying or would you study while work? Yeah. Meaning, would you put your full hours of study while having a full job? Or would you spend your time working at the time or doing class in the time? Uh, I mean, that's a really good question. And it kind of, it, I mean, not to deflect the question, but it, it's going to be a very personal thing, right? You know, it's very dependent on your personal situation, right? So, um, you know, there's, it, it's a really kind of a funny mix of there's, there's people with, you know, um, you know, like different levels of time, right? Do I have time, do I have more time at work or do I have more time at home, right? You know, like, and, and everybody's going to be a little bit different. Um, I, I really do think uh, that as far as, I'm going to try and answer the question and I, it's not going to be exactly what you're asking for, but um, I really do think that, that we have, that ex especially in, in the hacking or the, the information security field, we have amazing resources. Have training resources available to us. Um, if you go look at like Security Tube, which uh, it is a bunch of free videos, right? And you can spend time and, and go through it and learn that way. Um, now, if you if you have more more money than time, right? Um, then you, for example, or you have your company pay. Like Sands has amazing training, right? Um, but I also think that conferences are, are very important, right? So so coming to something like this is amazing, you know. 
making contacts here. I'm going away to conferences like DEF CON and Black Hat. You, you, I mean, you make you make relationships that will stick with you for life. You know, it's amazing as as you start going, you get to the, you see the same people everywhere, and it's, you don't even have to like introduce you like, oh, I saw you last year. Come on, let's you know whatever. I, I think it's really kind of dependent on your own situation on, on where that training is. And I'll, I'll yeah. add a, a second piece in on that. It, it's, yes, it's going to be a very personal thing, but also keep in mind that going forward, you are going to probably find something along the line where you become very passionate about that specific thing because your degree, again, is going to be a lot like the CISSP. It's going to be a foot or two deep and about this wide, so you've got a broad exposure. And you're going to shrink down into, okay, I'm going to be a code, a code analyst. I'm going to be an incident responder, and that's where your passion leads you. And once you find whatever that thing is, that this you like to go at. Bill loves Python. I, I, I'm getting to be that way about PowerShell. It's one of those things where you start, you dig into it, and you just start finding things that that, that you're going to do it, and that's going to help guide where you're going. And it 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 becomes uh, to refer back to my talk. It, it becomes about the box that is here. You start thinking inside your box. What are you going to be passionate about? What are you going to want to go and do? Sometimes you're going to be paid for it. Sometimes you're going to be paid to be the guy who shows up and, and looks at blogs all day. But you could, in, in using the malware analysis, <coughs> if your passion is malware analysis, looking in blogs may be a really good thing because you could create, if you're creating scripts all day long, a day of, looking for, for this kind of traffic. You find something at home, you put that in and you say, here's one of the filters I'm looking for. It starts banging, you know you've got an issue. And you found it, and you've used one passion to, to look into the other piece. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you'll find that time and again. And, and Bill's right, I mean, when, when you get, when you start reaching out and start talking to people, you'll run into things. I mean, the first time I, I met Bill was actually at that time, 15. And we live in the same city. Yeah. And then that time, 16, and, and, and ever since then we've been we've been friends. But it's one of those things that you'd be amazed at how many people you don't know that you know yeah. who, you're, who, who will be a good contact for. Any other questions? It's just beginning. Um, I, I, I'll go on. I, I, I have to caveat this one with um, I am one of the guys who helps write the six AMs, but the CompTIA security class is actually one of the. It, it's if if the if the CISSP is an inch deep and a mile wide, the security plus is half an inch wide. It doesn't go into the amount of depth. You don't have to have the same level of experience. I, it. But it, it's a it is a great introduction because it, 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 again I think both of those are exams that you would take one or both of those before you would go take the SANS course. I think because what you, you would might, find you, is you might you yeah. might not want to go and take. Yeah, we give a shot. <laughs> uh, so I, I think uh, I, I think to answer your question now when we talk about the CISSP or the Security Plus, um, we, we are talking about general generalization. Right. And, and actually, the, the point of my talk is I think we should get away from it, right? Um, and that you should start to hyper-focus on exactly where you want your career to, to be, right? So if you were to take one of those bubbles, right? In each one of those bubbles, there's going to be a certification for that, right? And so when you start, when you start drilling down and you get, you get closer and closer, you'll know what the, next, what the best one is, right? So to answer the question, what comes after CSSP? If you're talking in general terms, I completely agree. Right. I would say rather than that, I would say start with four. Yeah, four. yeah. And then after you turn on go into something that is really hyper focused out of something you learned in, yeah. in that first piece, you may find in there, or you may take you another year to act. And, and quite honestly, like I don't even think the third, like the step would be step one, security plus, step two, CSP. No, I mean like that's fine if you go down like that. I mean you know like. But quite honestly, I think the path should be, this is where I want my career to be, right? Uh, th this bubble, 
right? And then what? Okay, what are some of the sub? What are some of those functions, right? Which one of those sounds most appealing to me? There, brainstorm. What? What would an expert in one of those? What are those skills an expert would have for that? And then you've answered your own question. Um, which cert is the right one? You know, because if I'm going to hire a person for that, we're both going to know whatever that cert is, and then maybe then I'm going to go require. Any other questions? All right, thanks guys, I appreciate you guys coming up.